So we will watch him for a few minutes and to see if he's associating with any other elephant. So who do you think it is and why? This guy. Very short tail, the shape of the ear. With time, so we tend to recognize that certain individuals are in certain areas. But of course for that, the better thing is to color them. For the last eight years now, we've been working with the Centre for Conservation Research in Sri Lanka. Predominantly a lot of their work is around how they can learn as much as they can about wild elephants in Sri Lanka. It's all based around research, data, studying elephants' behaviour in relation to people, and then how they can use that research to influence government decisions. I'm Pratu Fernando and I do research on elephants. We have been following the elephants, identifying them, and learning about what they do and what happens to them for the past 25 years or so. So what we're seeing here is a female herd composed of adult females and young ones. Two of them have collars on them. This is the herd that we have been studying for the longest period since 1991. Asian elephants are forest animals, so they are difficult to keep track of and observe unlike African savanna elephants. So the only way to find out where an elephant goes, what its home range is, that kind of information you can only get with colouring them. The Auckland Zoo Conservation Fund has supported GPS colouring of elephants, which gives us this kind of information. So this area is part of the Matala Managed Elephant Range or MER. So this is an area where development is taking place, a lot of development, but elephants will also remain. This is a highway that is going across this area through the elephant habitat. So it would normally block elephant movement. So this underpass for elephants is located here based on some of the tracking data that was funded by the Auckland Zoo New Zealand. Sri Lankans love elephants and that is the only reason that over half of Sri Lanka we still live with elephants. Sri Lanka has the highest density of elephants in Asia. It's about 10 times that of any other country. So every national park, every protected area already has the number of elephants it can support. We could try to push them inside the parks and fence them in which will starve the elephants to death. This is not a solution that is acceptable to Sri Lankans. So the only option really is to learn to live with the elephants without conflict. And if we are successful in that, we can coexist with elephants and we can show the world how to live together with a potentially dangerous animal in peace. We are here outside the international port in Hambantara and as you can see there's a large hole in the fence here. It's almost impossible to build a physical barrier for elephants because elephants are very big and strong. They, all these concrete columns with iron bars mean nothing to them. In Asia, elephants and people live in close proximity to each other. And crops are things that people have selectively bred and improved. For thousands of years, they have worked on this and made it much, much, much better than what's in the forest. And unfortunately, the elephants completely agree. Human-elephant conflict is very widespread. It's become a big socioeconomic and political issue. And a lot of our work is involved in finding solutions and finding ways to manage the conflict. This is the Tamanava village and this is the first village electric fence that we did in Sri Lanka uh, by our organization, which was about eight years ago. This village is doing much better now than before they had the fence. Because earlier, any time an elephant would come here, they would just walk through the village and eat whatever was there. Now that doesn't happen. So this is uh, one of our paddy field fences in Matala. So these fences, we use the GI pipes 
and the fence post is also energized and they put up the fence when they start cultivating and one on the day they harvest they take down the fence and take it back home with them and store it at home till they cultivate the next season and the elephants are free to then come and eat the leftover harvest and use the paddy field area till the next growing season if you have a fence a electric fence and there's no one around elephants are going to learn to break it so for that reason we don't advocate having permanent fences around paddy fields so both these together permanent village electric fences and seasonal paddy field fences have made it possible for people to live in areas with elephants without getting into conflict with them to a large extent that then opens the door to human elephant coexistence instead of human elephant conflict when you actually see a wild elephant living in its natural environment it's amazing it's a spectacle it is such a complex situation i'm just really proud we're working with some incredible people um, that are doing some amazing stuff and essentially it's as simple as in order to save a species you need to understand them and for asian elephants it's very very difficult to study them because they're so secretive Preto and his team have dedicated their lives to this and just to see it at work is pretty incredible and pretty amazing so our role here at the zoo is to be an advocate um, and user likes of Angeli and Boomer who are so, so good at it to basically tell the story and continue to make people aware of that. And like I say, we try our hardest to do the best way that we can. I don't think there's any child in the world today, in any culture, who doesn't know what an elephant is. And that child could actually go and see a living, breathing, wild elephant today. If we lost that, and if we had to only look at bones and pictures like for dinosaurs, I think that would be a very, very sad day for humanity.